All right, so I didn't plan on vlogging today, but this is just too comical. We are up here near Pagosa Springs and we're in the National Forest looking for a boondocking spot, but internet is very scarce. So we got Melissa over here. She's got T-Mobile and AT&T. And then we got Mike over here and he's got Verizon and AT&T. And then you got Jesse. What is Jesse doing? Jesse's doing nothing. Jesse is the driver. I'm the driver for the day. So we all piled into the Jeep. Kate is back at the main road with the two trucks and the two trailers. So this setup is working really well because we drove really far down here. And at least that way we can come in the Jeep and make sure that the internet works before we tow the rigs down here. I think it might work. But I wanted to show you guys this. This is why I pulled the camera out in the first place. We had a casualty! Oh man! What a bummer! That's why I pulled the camera out in the first place. To show you the casualty of our light. That was original. That was original 1989 Jeep Grand Wagoneer fog light. And now it's broken. Such a bummer. All right, babe, are we gonna, are we gonna camp here? Are we gonna make it work? We're gonna make it work. The worst case, we're gonna go into town tomorrow and Friday to work at maybe a coffee shop or something. Sweet. It's a really cool town and we wanna check it out, so we're gonna run the risk. Flashback. Here we are in a rare national forest in the mountains of Colorado. Running a lot of speed tests because we can't find any internet and this is a problem. How's it over there, Mike? 2.8 Wow, 2.8 upload over there? Wow. I just want you to witness that we're both walking around with us one cell phone in each hand. Wow. End of flashback. All right, so we made it here to camp, and I have to say, Melissa, you did a great job. That road was pretty gnarly. I got nervous following you in the Jeep because I forgot my radio, so I couldn't give you guidance, so you were 100% on your own. Yeah. We came down from, what was it, Wolf Creek Summit. I don't know if Down, it's close enough. Okay, down we Down into... We went through South Fork, Colorado. To Pagosa Springs. Yes. And there's a couple really gnarly turns, super steep inclines, but what's nice about Colorado is they mark it all out oh my really gosh. well. There's signs like every five seconds. There were so many signs. It's like there's a huge hairpin turn coming up and you, like, you couldn't possibly yeah. miss any of these signs. So it was, was such great. a beautiful drive. I was bummed that I left my radio in the trailer. We have radios we could talk to you, so I couldn't tell her how beautiful it was. You know, I even can see it with my eyes she could though, see it. it's okay. Well, it is nice giving her guidance though from the Jeep. She feels more comfortable towing the trailer than she does driving this old jalopy Jeep. Yeah, just because it was like a steep mountain pass and I, uh, this was actually my second time towing with this little trailer. In the mountains. It, and both were in the mountains on yeah. pretty gnarly roads. So that was a, you know, a good experience for me to get out of my comfort zone and just, you know, take it slow and steady. And he said I didn't use the brakes too much. You did great, so that's you good. did great. The Jeep has been so nice for scouting spots. Yeah. So with the toy hauler, the Jeep would have been really nice. But even with this little trailer, you don't want to drag your trailer down a road, a washboard road for miles upon miles without knowing if there's going to be a spot there that's vacant, if there's going to be internet, mm -hmm. you know, if it's going to work out for you. Or whether you'll be able to turn around once you get down there. So we went and we brought just our phones. Yeah, turning around is huge too. We brought just our phones and we had all three carriers, but you know, we were getting down there, we were getting like 20 up or download, sorry, 20 download. And we we're getting like two up and we we're like, we don't know if this is gonna work. Yeah, we, <laughs> myself and our friend Mike were, you know, being a bunch of numbskulls walking around with like one cell phone in each hand, but searching for internet. We have a great idea now. So what we're gonna do next time is we're gonna take the Jeep, we're gonna take our Mophie 4500 router, and we can power it mobily with our Safari LT. So now we'll have this hooked up. We'll have it in the Jeep, 
and we'll be cruising around and we will know exactly what speeds we're gonna be getting. It's normally the Verizon card that mm -hmm. goes in here and it'll be a great way to know exactly what we're gonna get. Yeah, so what's great about this thing is something that, you know, we've only had it a few months, so we kind of forget to use it at the most opportune times, like the other day when we were scouting yeah. spots out here and trying to figure out internet. Um, it's similar to a Jackery, if you're familiar with those, but this is the Lion Safari LT, and we've had it ever since we went to Mexico. Yep. And when we went to Baja, we got it in a little truck camper, and it's been great. Yeah, it's pretty much our primary source of power. power. With the new trailer, yeah. Yeah, with our two deployable panels. Yeah, the new trailer only has one 170 watt panel on the roof, so we use this strictly for work, and then the 170 watt keeps our lithium, because we have Lion Energy lithium batteries, nice and topped off. So mm -hmm. that's what we're gonna do next time, and we will link everything below in case you're curious. Yeah. If you have any questions about the Mophie, or the Safari, or the the Safari UT 1300s, those are the lithium batteries that we have, Yep. let us know, and we will help you guys out the best we can. But we just thought it was interesting, um, you know, having the Jeep, and then being able to take this in the Jeep and go scout spots. And we bring a couple chairs and we just throw them out just because we've gone down a spot and I'm like, oh, that's the one. And then you go back and you get the trailers and then you're like, somebody beat us to it. Yep. So, little pro tip, I know not everybody has an extra car, but maybe if you have a class A and you're gonna disconnect your Jeep or something, maybe get something like this or take what you have already and maybe you can have it powered yeah. and, and check your internet before you get there. Pagosa Springs here in Southern Colorado and we like it. We like it a lot. We <laughs> we have never been here before. It was kind of on our list. It's small. It reminds us of a few other towns we've been to but just a little nicer and a little bigger. Yeah it's kind of really I mean it's like a little bit of a touristy vibe but not really. Yeah it's kind of in the middle. Yeah. Which and, is nice. <laughs> and uh, there's a really cool hot spring like what do you even call it like a resort Not yeah really. there's a couple resorts where you could pay and then go in the hot springs for the day they probably have food they probably have a bar all that kind of stuff but we're digging the town and we're just kind of cruising around checking it out just exploring So our hometown of Simi Valley, California is very much your quintessential suburbia. It has like two or three mom and pop restaurants, but mostly it's just your typical suburban track home out on the West Coast. And you know, you have all of your chain restaurants. You have Applebee's, Chili's, I don't know, just all your chain restaurants. And we always find ourselves looking for a smaller town that has a lot more mom and pop businesses. Mom and pop coffee shops in particular. Yes, we like coffee shops, but our hometown literally only had Starbucks or what's the other one? Tea Leaf. Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. That's literally it. They don't have not even one mom and pop coffee shop. They do now. Yeah, now that we're gone, they have one. Coffee Company. Now that we're gone. Washed away. Ah! Ah! Floor's lava. 